Well, I, 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 feel, I feel like we've reached a point in the American church where there is a, at least a substantial number of bishops who are willing to say that that's right. Yeah, I, I think... And, but I feel like there's, there's this, the question, and this is the question that hangs over the Baltimore fiasco, right, is, okay, is this Rome saying, you know, there are canonical law problems here and you're rushing something through for PR purposes and we're a universal church and we want there to be universal measures and it's all very reasonable? Is that what's going on? And I mean, you know, we'll get part of an answer to that, I guess, in February, but, or is it that, you know, there are a lot of people in Rome, some of them with a large amount of influence and power, who don't want, for instance, an American-led investigation into the ascent of Cardinal McCarrick, right? I mean, how much, how much is, how much is, the, the official story, the true story, and how much is it, you know, that people in Rome don't agree with Liz, <laughs> basically? All of those things. Somebody said to me that a, a helpful way to understand, maybe I read it in Bad Religion, I don't know, it's a good book. Um, but uh, somebody said to me um, that totally one way dated. to kind of understand the huge cultural divide between us and Rome is that Americans are essentially sacrami sac sacramentalized Puritans and Southern Europeans are essentially sacramentalized pagans. And, um, and, and the difference... That's really good, and I can say it was not me. <laughs> okay. Well, since I don't know who it was, I'm going to take it. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the difference between those kinds of um, groups entering into the same Catholic Church are, is, are, are profound. And so we're shocked to discover that there's sin among the leaders of the Church because we think that everybody with a collar is holy and not going to commit any sins. And the Italians are shocked to occasionally discover that there's a saint or someone who prays among them. <laughs> right. So it's, um, the, the difference, the cultural differences there are huge. And so I think there is a way in which, um, you know, many people who are, who are long-time sort of Vatican folks have a hard time understanding, not the magnitude, I mean, they understand the magnitude of this, but they have a hard time understanding why we seem so dispirited and deflated by the fact that the church is full of gr grave and profound sinners. Because all their beautiful buildings were built by grave and profound sinners who, are, you know, who ran the church at various times. And, um, and, so, uh, and so that, that difference is, and, and then we kind of expect that the rule of law will fix everything and we have this idea that the USCCB is going to come up with six policies and, and, and after six policies bishops aren't going to commit any more sins or we're going to catch them if they do. And, and that doesn't, you know, that's sort of not the Roman way of thinking about things either. And, and maybe, you know, there's a way in which it's not a Catholic way either because I think part of our challenge is to, um, is to come to grips with a church which, that is from top to bottom. Um, composed of sinners, uh, you know, if St. Paul is chief among sinners, then we shouldn't expect that others won't be too, and, and then sort of to reconcile that with our understanding of what it means to be Catholic, what it means for our own sinfulness and for our own call to holiness and for theirs. Um, so there's this big cultural divide that comes with that.